Hello, Paradise Panther artists. My name is Mrs. Telfer, and today we are going to meet an African-American artist named Jacob Lawrence. Jacob had an abstract style, he focused on black history, and he had a love of tools. So put on your hard hat, gather your toolbox, and let's see what Jacob Lawrence created in his artwork. I want you to pretend that you are running in a race. As you are running fast towards the finish line, you might be feeling tired, excited, or even nervous. But as you get that much closer, you make it, you're at the end. Look at these men who are almost to the finish line. From looking at their bodies and faces, we can tell they are probably sore, tired, or trying their hardest, or maybe even afraid to lose. Can you tell what kind of race they are in? Raise your hand if you have an idea and your teacher will call on you. This is called a relay race. Look at how they pass the stick called a baton to the person who runs next. We can see the baton right here. There's a baton in his hand and a baton in his hand and a baton in his hand. Besides just being an exciting close race, this race was very special because it was in the Summer Olympics. I bet a lot of you like to watch the Olympics on television. And maybe some of you have even seen TV commercials or posters advertising for the Olympic Games. This picture is a poster made by our master artist. His name was Jacob Lawrence. Look at the poster. It's exciting, isn't it? Jacob Lawrence wanted to catch the excitement of the Olympic Games. Jacob Lawrence and his wife were invited to attend the Olympic Games in Germany. There were 28 artists from around the world who were asked to do Olympic posters. They asked Lawrence because they wanted a black artist to show the many events that black athletes have won in the Olympics. Doing that poster was special for Lawrence but there was another invitation that really thrilled him. It came from the President of the United States. In 1977, our President was Jimmy Carter. Let's find out what he asked Lawrence to do. I want you to look carefully to find something very, very small that shows the United States in this painting. Raise your hand and your teacher will call on you. See if you can find three small American flags. Okay, we can find an American flag right here in this person's hand. There's another American flag right here. And the third American flag is right here. Great job. Now, let me tell you what is happening here. President Carter invited Lawrence, along with other artists, to do several paintings when the president took office in Washington, DC. But you might be thinking, where is the ceremony? Lawrence doesn't show us all of the festivities and the many important people. Instead, he shows us everyday people who are trying to catch a glimpse of what is happening. We can see people are sitting in trees in order to try to see what is happening. We can even see a person being lifted up right here 
in the corner. We can tell the people are happy because we can see smiles on their faces. This person is smiling. Also, this person is smiling. There are many smiles. We can tell the weather looks cold that day and crisp and clear. It was January and the bare trees show up against the icy blue sky. We can imagine being all bundled up in heavy winter clothes on this day. Isn't this an unusual way of showing a presidential inauguration? We never even see President Carter. We only see the crowds looking up towards the steps of the Capitol where the ceremony takes place. Why would Jacob Lawrence paint such a special occasion this way? Well, I will tell you all about it. When you know the reason he painted it that way, it will put a big smile on your face, just like the people in this painting. Lawrence was invited to come to Washington, D.C. He was given a seat near the stage so he would have an excellent view of the ceremony. But as he sat watching the president take his oath of office, he looked behind him and way in the distance, there were bare trees and people up in those trees. They were applauding more than the people in the real audience next to the stage. So Lawrence decided the people themselves were the most important part of Carter becoming their president. Let's meet Lawrence and find out how he became an artist famous enough to receive important invitations from a United States president and an Olympic committee. I would like to introduce you to our next master artist, an American artist, his name is Jacob Lawrence. When Lawrence was in elementary school, he went to daycare, just like some of you may do after school. And his favorite activity was arts and crafts. I bet some of you like to do arts and crafts too. To keep her children safe and busy while she was working, Lawrence's mother put them in a daycare program. A famous black artist taught the arts and crafts there. During the many hours he spent there, Jacob worked first with crayons and then with poster paint. He particularly loved to paint brightly colored patterns. A pattern is a shape, line, or color that is repeated. Go ahead and look at the clothes you have on today. Do you have a pattern on any of your clothes? Go ahead and raise your hand and your teacher will call on you. While he was growing up, Jacob saw many of the patterns that he painted in his home. Go ahead and think of your home. You might find brightly colored patterns that you could use in art maybe on the walls, in the fabrics, or on the rugs on the floor. Jacob said his early love of color patterns came from the bright throw rugs that his mother used to scatter around the house to bring some color and brightness into their home. When you go home today, look around your house to see if you can find patterns just like Lawrence did. Lawrence considered himself very lucky to be 62 blocks or 12 miles away from one of the best museums in New York City. He would walk the 62 blocks and spend hours looking at the paintings of great masters. That is a long walk to get to an art museum. But while he was there, 
he also learned about black history and about an American hero named Harriet Tubman. Go ahead and raise your hand if you've heard of Harriet Tubman before. Thank you for those quiet hands. You may put your hands down now. Let's go ahead and see a painting all about her. Does anyone think they can find which person is Harriet Tubman in this painting? Go ahead and raise your hand and your teacher will call on you if you think you can find her. We see Harriet Tubman right here on the right hand side of this painting. Harriet is holding out her large brave hands to people who are escaping slavery. And she is pointing to the North Star. We can see she is pointing right here and this is the North Star. To be safe, the slaves had to hide during the day and travel at night. I think it would be very hard to travel in the dark. But the North Star led the way to freedom. In this painting, they are in a forest and they are crossing a river. We can see there are fish here in this river. Lawrence has hidden three animals in the trees. Can you find them? Go ahead and raise your hand and your teacher will call on you if you think you can find one of the animals that is in the trees. Great job. We can see a squirrel here in this corner. We can also see a deer right here in the trees. And we can find an owl in the tree right here. As a boy, Lawrence had special things that he looked forward to doing and a special place to go to have fun besides the art museum. Let's find out what it was next. This special place where he loved to go had people wearing costumes. There is an audience and there are actors. I bet you guessed it that Lawrence loved to go see musicals and plays in the theater when he was a boy. And when he grew up, he painted several pictures of those good memories. If we took a photograph of these two actors on this stage, would the photo look exactly like Lawrence's painting? No. So Lawrence changes things. He sees when he paints them. This makes his style abstract. Lawrence always wanted to show his feelings rather than making a realistic painting. Here, we can also see many patterns. Look at the background. We see several patterns on the walls here. We also see patterns in their costumes here on the left. As a boy, Lawrence had special things that he looked forward to doing. This next painting by Lawrence will show you what fascinated him and kept him painting the same thing for 17 years. This picture is about carpenters and builders. I bet some of you might like to build things and make things with tools. 
Lawrence grew up around carpenters and cabinet makers, and he always thought they were so talented. Let's look at the colors first. Here, we can see that he uses colors that are flat. We do not see shading or shadows in the colors. Look at the man's blue overalls in the foreground. We do not see any differences in color. They are also showing us flat colors. Here, we can count about eight or maybe even more tools in this painting. When it comes time to draw or paint a tool, Lawrence would go to his collection of tools in his studio. Besides painting tools, he also likes to build with them. You probably have never thought of a hammer or a pair of pliers as being beautiful, but Lawrence thought tools were beautiful. Since childhood, Lawrence has loved tools. Here, we can see many examples. We can see a screwdriver right here. We can see a saw right here. A drill right here. A pair of pliers right here and a wrench right here. Lawrence loved the look and feel of tools and how they fit the human hand. Let's look at carpenters and tools the way Lawrence did as being beautiful. So beautiful that he spent those 17 years painting them. In this next builder painting, there are just three men. Will there be just three tools? Let's find out. Look at where the man is overlapping with a tool. We can see here that his arm is overlapping the saw. And here we can see at least six tools in this painting. The title of this is Carpenters. Have you ever worked with any of the tools that you see here? Or is there a tool that you think is beautiful, like Lawrence felt? Go ahead and raise your hand if you have an idea and your teacher will call on you. Jacob Lawrence painted himself in his studio. Here, we can find items in his studio that relate to his artwork and his love of tools. Let's review what we have learned about our master artist, Jacob Lawrence. Jacob Lawrence lived in the United States and once made a poster for the Summer Olympics. He painted flat shapes that are abstract. He painted builders and tools for 17 years, and he enjoyed doing arts and crafts as a child. Great job, Paradise Panther artists, learning about our American master artist, Jacob Lawrence. Now that you know so many tools, you will create a beautiful picture of tools in your art project. I will see you next time. Have a great day.